Neil, I'm trying to upgrade you to become a panelist, and you're declining. So now you're accepting. There you are. There you are. Welcome back to Face, Mr. Bitcoin. Hi, Dale. How are you? Good, buddy. How you doing? Never How better. How you doing? Never better. I, I know you're very happy, and you you are now in face. That's your new name, <laughs> well, Mister Bitcoin. Bitcoin, because okay. you're exclusive. I mean, you're loyal. You're exclusive. You don't fool around and date other altcoins or <laughs> even uh, Ethereum or Litecoin. You're true blue to Bitcoin. So yeah, and uh, it works. Been working out for me. I think we're up. Uh... Close to forty yeah. percent since the last time we talked, Dale. Yeah, what a move! <laughs> uh, so, uh, congratulations on that. I I want to start with this because I I really don't understand it, but I know some people that have been you know Bitcoin enthusiasts um, really have believed in it through the ups and downs of Bitcoin. Uh, one being Mark Yusko. Do you know Mark? And uh, I I, yeah. I saw a video. I didn't watch uh, the whole thing. But some of these people are saying that Larry Fink getting involved is not a good thing for Bitcoin. Not necessarily that it won't go higher because he's a pretty good promoter. Uh, he can get, you know, uh, move markets. He's, you know, they, they were, they're the landlords of America. I mean, after the housing crisis, they bought up all the homes. Now he's going to probably try and corner Bitcoin. Uh why did why is Mark saying that, and do you agree uh, with that development not being um, positive? And he's not the only guy. There's this other reporter uh, that talks about it. She gets I don't know a hundred thousand views every time she opens her mouth. Uh, uh, why do you think he's saying that about Fink? Yeah. So I guess. Personally, I rather as much individuals self custody their own Bitcoin. Um, but, you know, the financialization of Bitcoin, in my opinion, was inevitable that okay. big institutions were going to come in. Um, so, yeah, I guess some people have concerns that uh, all these ETFs consolidating all this Bitcoin will be a honeypot for like the US government down the road to potentially do like an executive order 6102 kind of thing, which was when uh, FDR seized all the gold in the US um, or required people to give up their gold. So I guess there are people that have that fear that aggregating all this Bitcoin, uh, you know, most of these ETFs use Coinbase as their custody provider. So all it's going to take, I guess, is one day the U.S. government knocking on Coinbase's door and saying, you have to turn over the Bitcoin to us. So I guess that's a fear people have. Uh, but even one, I, I don't know how likely that is, especially in the short to medium term. Yeah. Um, We'd have to be in the middle of a big crisis. Or yeah. Probably, and have, how about yeah. right before they uh, make the move to CBDCs? Maybe. I guess you have to think about, like, why did they want gold last time when they issued when FDR issued that order? Well, the dollar was backed by gold. So they don't need gold or Bitcoin anymore because the dollar is backed by nothing. So the justification right. for issuing an order like that uh, wouldn't really make any sense. Like they could just keep printing more money. Um so, yeah, maybe it could happen one day, but that's why, you know, regardless, I would always tell people, learn about Bitcoin, get comfortable with it, and self-custody it yourself. So you don't have to worry about those those type of attacks. And uh, someone, I forgot who was, told me that even though we had the recall of the gold by FDR, not everyone turned in their gold. I, I don't think any. I think most people kind of ignored it. And then I think only one person was like criminally prosecuted for oh. not turning in their gold, like one person in the entire U S. Okay. Um, 
so but how would they even enforce that amongst individuals right uh that's why i say like coinbase it's an easy target you know right. but how are you going to go after individuals on a wide scale when you could literally hold your bitcoin private keys in your head right so you know? conspiracy uh theorists uh the way for you to finally relax about things is self custody of everything yeah since the, you know that's that's kind of the point of bitcoin <laughs> is yeah. to uh be um censorship resistance uh a permissionless network where you don't need permission um you know clearly it doesn't stop someone from like coming at you with a gun and being like give me your private keys and then you're going to have to make a decision but that's with anything in life right so bitcoin yeah. is the most unconfiscatable thing we've ever had okay well, that's a a great uh, you brought up a gun to your head that's a great bullet point <laughs> pun intended <laughs> so what what's up at swan so yeah i started at swan uh beginning of october as you can see my hat yeah um, I'm, I'm head of brand engagement for swan uh i do mostly marketing strategy type stuff help run uh Twitter, social media, uh, things like that. And yeah, it's a great place. You can buy Bitcoin. You could set up an IRA at Swan um, where, you know, you could hold actual Bitcoin. And a benefit to that is, you know, you don't um, have to deal with uh, the ETF fees. Now there are like, you know, IRA fees, but, you know, the ETFs have management fees, Right. That eat into your position. Uh, but yeah, Swan's moving in a great direction. We also have Swan Mining, uh, which is a new thing where we're mining Bitcoin. Uh, wow. Yeah, so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, the company's getting larger and larger. We now have, I, I don't know how many people, like over, over 150, I think. So yeah, it's becoming a, a juggernaut in the space. And I love that we're Bitcoin only, you know, me, uh, everyone that works there is focused on a mission to seeing, you know, Bitcoin being adopted uh, globally. And, you know, we're not in it for the short term pump and dump schemes that you see uh, in the crypto space. Okay. Um, why don't you tell people how Swan will uh, handhold you through the process? Yeah, so we have great uh, customer support. Um, you know, you'll actually talk to a live person if you want to. Uh, email, chat, whatever, on the phone, uh, where, you know, people have horror stories with these bigger um, exchanges like Coinbase, where it could take months, if you're lucky, to get in contact with someone. And, you know, Swan... Even though we're becoming a bigger company, we make sure to get back to everyone as soon as possible. We're constantly monitoring, monitoring email, social media. If anyone has any questions, you know, we're there to answer them. So do you have analysts that do technical work and for people that want to trade, even though you don't encourage it, um, give analysis, a uh, price analysis of Bitcoin support resistance areas uh, in case anyone ever wanted to, they're not a holder, but you know, they want to take profits on part of it and think they could buy, buy them cheaper again. Do you provide that type of service at Swan? So we have analysts at Swan, but they're, t they talk more qualitative stuff, uh, macro yeah. outlook, things like that. We have some internal things um, where people are running the numbers uh, but it's not, we're, we're not doing like TA yeah. okay. uh, stuff. It's just, it's okay. not, it's not really part of, um, our mission here, right? Our mission is that people should hold a better form of money, which is Bitcoin and to just buy it and hold it and not get caught up with the day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month movements. Okay. So, uh, we have having coming up. You want to explain yeah, yes. to our, you can yeah, see, I'm like, Thanks for reminding me. And uh, so we have that coming up, buddy. Uh, you know, it sounds like when you cut supply by 50%, it should um, 
you know, make every uh, the supply more valuable. Yeah. So is the market already pricing the having in with this run that we've had here? So just for clarification, it's not for people who aren't that familiar with what the having is. So the actual supply of Bitcoin is uh, will only ever be 21 million. Uh, and it's not actually cut in half the supply. The incoming oh. uh, issuance is cut in half. Okay. So, so you know, right that, now. Uh, yeah, so. that, that, uh, see, I didn't know. I thought yeah. they were cutting the supply of uh, all all the stock of bitcoins out there. No, 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 no. The the supply is fixed in terms of its upper uh, limit. It will only ever be twenty one million bitcoin. Uh, but when you the mo bitcoin miners, um, the ones who like aggregate transactions into blocks, <laughs> are rewarded with bitcoin when they um, find the next block. So right now they get 6.25 Bitcoin when they mine a block. When the halving comes, they will only get 3.125 Bitcoin. So that's what's halves is the uh, income, the supply issuance coming onto the market. Now, eventually that supply issuance uh, gets, you know, as you cut it in half more and more and more, eventually gets to zero and that's where you get the 21 million number mathematically it adds it's asymptotically to 21 million it's like you know 20 million <laughs> 999 okay. down you know it's but 21 million for all intents and purposes so um, as so a yeah. bitcoin miner would that um de-incentivize you at all so, so yeah so this is where like the games kind of begin it's for these Bitcoin miners who are spending tons of money on, you know, electric, electric, you know, energy costs. All yeah. of a sudden, their revenue coming in is cut in half immediately. Uh, you'll see a lot of miners shut down their operations, like smaller ones. You know, people. Now, this isn't uh, good news for the power grid. Uh, well, no, no, no. I'm the, kidding. The, I'm Bitcoin. Kidding. Well, we could talk about that separately, All but. Right. A lot miners are prepared for this, right? This isn't an unknown. It's known approximately the exact date it's going to happen, or, or within a few days at this point. Um, it's going to be sometime around April twentieth, give or take a few days. Um, it happens every two hundred ten thousand blocks, which on average is every ten minutes. Uh, so we know it's going to be around April twentieth. Like I said, give or take a few days. And at that point, you know, certain miners won't be able to continue profitably. Profitably, others will take advantage of the fact that other miners can't survive, right? So then there's, yeah. you know, there's all these different operational uh, dynamics that go on uh, with mining that uh, people outside of the industry don't really think about. So it sounds to me like the people that have scale, just like every other industry, are going to be the survivors and gobble up market share from the the guy in his garage. Um, and it's, it's not just gone. scale or people who have access to very cheap energy and electricity. Okay. I mean, right. if you're getting uh, electricity, if your cost of electricity is next to nothing, you know, you're still going to be profitable. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like each Bitcoin is what uh, fifty thousand plus dollars right now. So even when it halves from six point two five to three point one two five, you're still gonna have make what one hundred sixty thousand in revenue if you mine a block. Um, so you know, as long as your, um, you know, your electricity costs are low, you may be able to survive. Yeah, I'm not by no means They're raising I, rates here again in California. Utilities. Yeah, and uh, I bet a lot of Bitcoin miners aren't going to go to California. Yeah. So, so, I mean, ideally, a Bitcoin miner would be off the grid with uh, his own self-sufficient uh, uh, operation to work and live, right? Yeah, absolutely. A lot Bitcoin miners look for cheap energy, stranded energy. Uh, certain power grids um, have energy uh, that isn't used. And Bitcoin miners find those utility companies like, hey, we'll make a deal with you. You know, you have all this wasted energy that doesn't go to waste. 
we, we will come in and mine Bitcoin. So you have agreements between uh, power grids and Bitcoin miners. Famously, this is in uh, Texas with ERCOT, which I think is their um, utility uh, you know, company infrastructure there. So they actually have agreements with Bitcoin miners. So when there's a need for electricity uh, by residents of Texas, Bitcoin miners have agreed to shut off their, the, their mining in exchange for some compensation. That way the, the grid stabilizes. But when there's uh, extra energy available, electricity available, Bitcoin miners take advantage of that. So there's there's a lot of different dynamics at play. Um, it's a wild west. Yeah, it well, it's yeah, but it's a controlled wild west. I don't want people to think it's like chaotic. Yeah. These are like high level business decisions that are made. Um, I, this is it, like it's you know uh, like when people move from one country to another or. <laughs> people left the Midwest and travel, go West, young man. It's almost like a journey for freedom. That's how I see it. I mean, Bitcoin uh, preserves your purchasing power, preserves your wealth, you know, as they keep printing more and more money, you know, you want to be in fixed assets and Bitcoin is the most liquid and most finite and scarce asset uh, that we have out there. So makes sense to me to just keep accumulating more and more. Could we get a pullback to 30,000 if the NVIDIA ever heads south and there's a little bit of a liquidity event in equities? Or will it <laughs> uh, de decouple and just do its own thing? You know, this isn't my bread and butter, Dale. You try to get <laughs> I just me wanted me. to see. I just I mean, wanted I, to see, see a know, smile. Uh, no. Um, yeah, NVIDIA plays a big part in Bitcoin mining because they produce the chips, right? Okay. So Bitcoin miners have been a big customer of these yeah. chips that are used in the mining equipment uh, for years. It, so it, it, is, so it is, it, is it difficult getting a hold of these or uh, it was and no longer is? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But yeah, Bitcoin miners are competing uh, for supplies the same way gaming companies want these chips so there, there's a race um for uh supplies do you see a merger between bitcoin and nvidia anytime in the future <laughs> <laughs> well as you know dale bitcoin isn't a company uh if nvidia uh, if nvidia uh is watching our video or you know our live stream right now i would tell them that they should probably start to uh, acquire some Bitcoin for their treasury, similar to like MicroStrategy, the, who's the been Michael super Saylor. successful. Uh, they're, yeah. I think their Bitcoins now are $10 billion and they're yeah. up in terms of the US dollar by 70%. So, you wow. know, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, really a great example. And that would be part of the adoption process, wouldn't it, um, for... Uh, companies in their treasury to hold Bitcoin. Uh, are there many or is uh, Michael Saylor kind of uh, unique? Well, is... Tesla Tesla holds a little bit. Uh, I'm oh, not yeah, sure what the number right. is. Obviously, there's a lot of private companies that don't disclose because uh, they don't have to disclose that they're right. holding Bitcoin. But, you know, if you're sitting on cash, you know, Michael Saylor described this years ago, you know, if you have cash, what do you do with it? It's a melting ice cube. Fiat's a melting ice cube um, in terms it. of its purchasing power. So yeah, you know, you can acquire another company, but you know, that's super risky. So many acquisitions end up not being a good idea. You can invest um, in your own operations, but you know, maybe you don't need to. You don't want to force spend. And Bitcoin provides this uh, this vehicle to kind of park the wealth that your company has made and preserve its purchasing power over time. Okay, why don't we wrap it with uh, a lot of people are talking now that Larry Fink's in the game that uh, we may get back to or maybe never stopped, uh, you know, having Bitcoin have a yield and uh, uh, have products 
where you could get a yield like a bond or, you know, like what FTX said they were doing that, but weren't doing. Well, remember, so I would be careful, um, even if it's BlackRock, you know, Bitcoin um, doesn't, there's only ever going to be 21 million. This whole paying a yield, like where does the yield come from, right? I would always ask, if you don't know where the yield come from comes from, the yield is you. So you just need okay. to be careful. Um, and, you know, you're giving up your custody of your Bitcoin if you want this, you yeah. know, a yield. Uh, okay. And we've seen what happens. You know, obviously, places like BlackRock, Fidelity are a lot better uh, places than FTX and the BlockFi's of the world. Uh, these are um, behemoths, right, in our financial industry. But, you know, as a Bitcoiner, even if the 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 risk is 1%, I know how valuable Bitcoin is going to be over the long term. I don't want to take that chance by getting some measly yield on my Bitcoin. Okay, that's uh, uh, another pearl. Because the higher the yield, the higher the risk, Neil. There you that's go. what I was taught. And uh, Yeah, and that's that's what's crazy about it. That like when you saw these companies collapse, the block fives, they were only paying like three, four percent yield on the Bitcoin. And it's like, are you right. serious? You're that's all you want? Like yeah, that that means well that's you, when rates were zero. Yeah, but but still, yeah. but if you know what Bitcoin is, you know, in order, you're basically saying like I need, I trust Bit BlockFi to to survive for thirty plus years to regain my principal right at three percent. Obviously, there's compounding and stuff, but right. you know, you're not compounding. And would I trust my Bitcoin to someone like that for that kind of? measly return absolutely not okay well uh everyone listening to us and that uh sees the video later um i've personally reached out to neil when i was looking into it and uh you know he sent me over to swan and i get their stuff and he's very helpful because it's his mission and it's uh something that you know is to the marrow of his bone and wants people to, you know, um, find a way to protect themselves in a way that they haven't been able to for generations. And I'd reach out to Neil on X at Neil Jacobs, and uh, Neil will get back to you. So yeah, I, it doesn't matter. Even if you're not famous like Dale, if you message me on Twitter or X, whatever you call it these days, I try to respond to everyone. I get a lot of spam uh incoming on a daily basis so if i miss it i'm sorry but i do try to look through all of them and uh if you come to me with a question um i'll try to answer it don't just say hello just fire away your question right away <laughs> i don't have time for chit chat these days uh but okay. yeah so but yeah swan it's a, a great brokerage i wouldn't work for them if i didn't think they were a great company you could go to swan.com slash neil forward slash Neil. Uh, I think you get like $10 free if you use my link. You don't have to use my link. If you want to, you can. Um, I'm just really passionate about Bitcoin. I want to see you uh, learn about it and then make the decision for yourself that it's the right thing to put, uh, to allocate to. But also one other thing I got to plug while I'm here, been plugging Swan. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the having is coming. So you know my company, FOMO21, yeah, uh, I also sell Bitcoin merch and apparel, so check that out uh, okay. if you haven't yet. Yeah, that's a you know look, people look at T-shirts and read them wherever you go. Yeah, uh, and so I, I see it as it's part of spreading adoption in my like teeny tiny way, you know. And you know, you know, I wear this shirt outside, and people are like, "What's the having?" You know, yeah. and then the conversation starts. So, oh, you know, you'll do anything to meet a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the best way to uh to get Wait women. A girl? Okay. But, but, uh, well, anyway. you know, it, as Bitcoin's number, there's this funny meme in the Bitcoin community when the price of Bitcoin kind of like skyrockets or you know, oh yeah, goes off. People are like we're all getting girlfriends. You know, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> if yeah, if a number go up, you, you might be accurate <laughs> on that. So, uh, you know, I think you're one of the best Bitcoin ambassadors out there, Neil. 
and appreciate you coming in every three or four months uh, and help edify our community in, you know, an area where a lot of people feel intimidated by it uh, because they can't understand it. So uh, really appreciate you being here. You are an excellent ambassador for Bitcoin, Mr. Bitcoin. Thank you. I appreciate that. Neil Jacobs, everybody. Follow him at Neil Jacobs. And any questions you have about this asset class, uh, there's your go-to guy, Neil Jacobs. Sounds thank good. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Dale. Great to be talk on. To you. Let's, talk, we'll we'll yeah, have to talk. do this next quarter. Yeah, that's right. We're, you know, about every, you see in the spring. And if we're up another 40% going to next quarter, what, what will that put us at? My quick math says a new all-time high. 70. Yeah, new all-time high. So hopefully yeah. uh, that's in the cards. And if you ever need a bodyguard once it's over 100,000 to keep the women away, let me know. All right. <laughs> so uh, that's a wrap, everyone. Thanks, Neil. Bye, guys. Uh, remember, don't just count your Bitcoins or any individual asset. Count your blessings, too. And that's a wrap. And you could join the team in 15 minutes on the morning edge. I'll see you in May, Neil. Sounds good. Bye, Dale. All right. Adios, everyone. Good hunting. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.